Um, very excited for uh, today's edition. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Uh, today, I'd like to welcome our special guest, uh, JD, uh, who's the president of IntelliSys, a scan source company. Uh, so John and JD, welcome to the show. And with me, as always, I have uh, Claire on DSL CEO, uh, Scott Gilbert. So really excited about the session. We're going to really talk about channel, uh, really the, the basis behind you know, the technology evolution within the channel. And so wanted to have JD come on and, and give his perspective and, and obviously the long history. So JD, I'd, I'd love to give you an opportunity to uh, introduce yourself and, and, and talk to our, uh, our audience. Yeah, thanks, Andrew and Scott, both. Thanks for having me. We're so excited about the partnership with Calero. And, you know, it's pretty new to us, like in the last year or whatever it has been. Uh, ScanSource Intellisys is excited to go to market with your company because it's just so unique and so different and so relevant in today's world. So thanks for having me on. Yeah, I've, I grew up in the channel, so I'm the president of Intellisys and Modern Communications at ScanSource. And that means that I have all of our pretty much routes to market from a communication perspective, from a partner standpoint. So our VARs, our MSPs, our agents, et cetera. You guys may know that ScanSource has been in business for 30 years. And so we started out in that on-prem world, um, primarily with Avaya and then Cisco. I owned for over a decade one of the largest VARs in that ecosystem. So I've known ScanSource my whole life. Um, literally my whole business life. And then after I sold that company, I went into the supplier side and met a company called Intellisys. And my first day on the job, Intellisys's president at the time, Jay Bradley, came out and said, hey, you got to sign a non-disclosure agreement. We're selling the company to a company you never heard of called ScanSource. And I literally thought I was being punked. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like what? I know those guys. I knew more about you know, those guys and anybody in the room. And so uh, they came after me uh, about a year ago, 14 months ago, and said, hey, we want you to come home and bring this thing together. And so we had this unique hybrid distribution opportunity to bring together the recurring world with the old world of on-prem communications, et cetera, digital, hardware, the whole kit and caboodle. So excited to be here, excited to be with you guys, and look forward to uh, a really healthy relationship together moving forward. Yeah, really appreciate it, JD, and thank you for that intro. Um, so, you know, to kind of kick it off, I'm going to kick it off with a real softball. Um, so, you know, JD, you know, what is channel? It, it means so many things to different people. You know, how do you how do you define it? And how do you you know kind of explain it as you talked about all the different areas that ScanSource and Intellisys play in? It's you know, what is channel to you? I always talk about channel as a force multiplier. You know, any business, your business, uh, any of the big suppliers, uh, it's healthy to have a direct business for sure. Like you, you have to, you have to have that hands-on approach to some of your biggest, baddest, bestest customers, et cetera. You want to stay close to them. Uh, you don't really need a middleman. You don't need somebody in between. You dedicate resources to them, et cetera. But what about everybody else? You know, it's always been common sense to me that why would I go and try to, you know, catch 10 fish in a day? when I can hire 20 people to fish one fish each for me. And that's really the channel. It's a force multiplier. It's alternative routes to market. It's the ability to touch customers in a different way. Uh, I can tell you when I was a VAR back in the day, um, suppliers would come in and my customer would sit there and listen and shake their head and, you know, really, oh, that's awesome. That's a great offering. And the door would close and the supplier would leave and they would look at me and say, what do I do? And that's, that's, that's the power of the channel. It's that a relationship with a customer at a level that most suppliers can't get to because you have so much to do and so much on your plate. And so it's growing, it's, it's important, it's significant, and now even more significant based on us coming out of this pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, Scott, we've uh, decided to make some intentional investments that we maybe not. Well, why do you see the benefits of the channel as, as JD laid out well, and why are we going to the channel now? Yeah, uh, so first I'll do what I always do, which is not answer your question initially. Yeah, I uh, figured. And, and, and I will say welcome, JD, really appreciate uh, you, you coming on with us. Uh, now I'll get to your question. Um, so so look, the you know I have an affinity for the channel. I think you know JD and I had a conversation a few weeks ago. Uh, my relationship with Intellisys dates back uh, close to two decades now. 
Um, and it was 15 years ago when I was at a, a, a CLEC that, you know, we used IntelliSys for all sorts of things. And I saw the value of it. Um, and I think when some people see that we make an investment in, let's say, um, the channel, they're saying, all right, well, they're trying to de-risk their sales approach. And to me, that has absolutely nothing to do with it. It has everything to do with what JD says, which is, I don't want to tell the customer how they buy from us. If they want to buy direct, great. If they prefer direct relationships, fantastic. If they've got a trusted advisor and a partner or a channel partner like IntelliSys, great. I don't want to put a restriction on it. So from my perspective, it is about being easy to do business with. And sometimes when that trusted relationship already exists with a company like ScanSource IntelliSys, great. We've got, we're going to make the investment in that. We're going to enable the channel partners that, that sit underneath that umbrella to be able to bring those customers to us and do business with us, which, which makes it easier for the customer. And that's, from my perspective, that's what it's all about. Andrew, if I could just add one thing onto that, just because it's so well said, it's the same approach we take with our partners, our customers, which is our partners, right? We don't, Scott said it so well. We don't really care how you go to market. You could be a VAR, an MSP, an agent. Do your thing, however you want to do it, but just do it with us. And so it's the same type of approach that you take with your customers that we as the largest TSD and most relevant take with our partners. So same thing. No, absolutely. And, and, and thank you guys for that. You know, one of the things I've seen throughout my career in technology is, is a massive evolution in the channel. And I think, you know, now it's continuing to evolve. We've seen consolidation with what IntelliSys and ScanSource has done. There's been other things that happened. This so, JD, how are you seeing it evolve in in your time there, and kind of where is it at now? Yeah, I would say two things. Number one, consolidation is here, and it's relevant. It's a natural um, it's a natural way of things in any business uh, industry, and we're seeing suppliers, we're seeing agents, we're seeing VARs, MSPs kind of team up, combine. We're seeing private equity come in for the first time ever. Why? Because the returns are big enough now that it makes sense. And that's why they're coming now. So consolidation is super relevant. I think, uh, again, not to go back to a horrible topic, but this pandemic really accelerated things. I think the move to the cloud was already in progress uh, and crossing that chasm with SMB, trying to get to the enterprise. But I think the pandemic sped it up. My friend Jay McBain told me that in the first, in the first 90 days of the pandemic, there was $15 billion a week spent globally in digital transformation. And you can't do that direct, guys. Like that's not, it's not possible. And so I think, Scott, that's what happened, right? I think yeah, all that yeah. stuff accelerated everything. So you, we, we kind of talked about, you know, the, the evolution of channel. Where, where do you see it going, JD? Yeah, I see... No, I see a lot of um, a lot of a lot of different things happening as the channel evolves. Uh, I definitely see it growing, and so I am not of the mindset that it's all going to be a marketplace. People want the human element, and they trust their channel partners. Uh, I always say to our partners, where there's mystery, there's margin, and as things get more confusing, as there's more offers, um, there are more programs. Customers need help. And so I see consolidation continuing. Uh, it doesn't mean there's going to be four superpowers. I think there's going to be a lot of channel partners out there in all different veins. But I just see it growing as companies grow and as options become, you know, more available. They're going to need partners as trusted consultants to help them figure it out. Yeah, I think, they, you know, just real quick to add on to that, I think one of the things that I've seen in, in a lot of channel, uh, what, what, what I'll say are small agents is that those small agents, they foster a business that is very intimate with their customers and often limited in size. And then they get to a point where they can't take on more customers. So what they want to do is now be able to offer that customer more. And I think that's where that master agent relationship really comes into it. So now they can, they can maintain that, that basic customers, continue that trusted relationship, you know, be the advisor, but then be able to say, hey, I can keep growing my business because now I can offer you this service or that service or Tim, which is a great idea. Um, but that helps that sort of small agent 
really continue to grow their business without losing that personal touch with their 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 sort of limited base of customers. It's really a great point, and I I have to say that that's the biggest difference between us and our competition. Uh, we are publicly traded. We're very well capitalized. We've been in the game longer than anybody else. If you add all of them up, they weren't going to hit the levels that we're at today. And I say that a little bit of a chest thumper, but I say it because we can offer programs and capital and education and enablement that the competition can't. So, Scott, we're never going to, you know, never say never. I can say this for a fact. We're never going to buy agencies and stack them up and that sort of thing, but we will invest in them. And so we're loaning out money. We um, give them money to buy, uh, to make acquisitions, to fund headcount, to put um, new strategies in place, whatever they come up with. So it's a really unique position for us to be in because we're able to step in and step up with the partners in a way that others can't. So I, I mean, I think what both of you have said that resonates so much with me is that trusted advisor, that that intimate relationship with the customer. And you know, JD, you, you pointed to it early on in your career as the customer asks, "Well, what do I do?" The supplier just came in here, gave a gave a great presentation, but is this something that's important to me? Is this you know, should I do this project? Should I do that project? From the aspect of the customer, we put ourselves in, in their feet, no matter the size of them, whether it's a large enterprise or you know, a small and medium-sized business, what benefit does the channel bring to them? Well, you can't be all things to all people, number one, and there's only so much you can really be an expert in, right? And so I think that customers, uh, coming from a hybrid distribution perspective, customers may be real good at voice. Like that, that may be all day long, even a transition to UCAS, right? And they said, okay, we've traditionally done the PBXs. The days of the cutovers are gone. I can move you to the cloud. and a lot of them just walk away after that instead of asking the next question. Hey, what are you doing for security? And what are you doing for CCAS? What are you doing for Thames? What are you doing for the next thing? And they don't ask the question, Andrew, because they're scared to, because they don't, they're, not, they're not equipped to do it. That's where we help. That's where we can come in and say, hey, ask the next question. We got you. We have experts in CX. We have experts in security. We have partnerships with Calero. We can come in and take care of you and go to that next place. Ask the next question. Scott, I think that's the mistake they make every time, but you can't know it all. So, you know, and, and Scott, uh, to build on that, upon that, as we begin to think about our entry into the, the channel, um, you know, we've, we've done it in, a, in an intentional fashion. Um, and you know, are building a program around it. We're not just going at it. Well, you, you said earlier that it's you. You don't want to dictate how a customer wants to buy, but we also want to gain ex, We, we want to gain those relationships. And how are you seeing this you know partnership with Intellisys evolve and in the customer relationship? Yeah, I, th I think it. I think that that's a good question. I think it actually tags off of um, something I would add to JD's uh, answer on the last question in terms of what does the channel offer and what are we willing to do to put into it, which is there's a certain amount of diligence that the master agent and the agent brings. They're bringing to their customers a set of solutions that have been vetted, have been proven, right? So they're not going out and just looking at a, an, a you know, huge range of possible voice providers or UCAS providers or TEM providers, they've got sort of a curated list. And they said, hey, we're doing business with this company, with other customers, uh, and they're, they're good, they're solid. So I think from our perspective, when we talk about the investment in the channel, th there's sort of two pieces to it. One is, is investing in relationships with companies like IntelliSys ScanSource in terms of giving them the materials, collateral, training, information, access that they need to go to their customers and say, hey, this could really benefit you. The second piece of it is we're, gonna, we're going to deliver. We are going to deliver to their customers, and we know that that's the most important piece. Um, when we talk about gaining those additional relationships with either customers or sub-agents, agents in this case, it's all about our delivery. And if we stand behind what we say we're going to deliver, then the relationship's gonna work out great. I know that. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind. 
Uh, it's a lot like dominoes, right? You hit those first couple ones, they start falling down. Uh, the, the channel sees the success that other agents, other customers are having, and it works out well for everybody. The customer, us as a provider, and the channel partner in the middle. Andrew, I love the word he used, diligence. It's such so spot on. I would add on to that trust. They know that if they come to us for a solution around Tim and we bring Calero to the table with them, they know it's going to happen. Like there's no, that is not in question. And so it's just like dominoes, like he said. I mean, you knock one or two down and it's, you got to put a big quote on your channel leader because he's going to have a fun time here in the next year. I, 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 I love my big quotas on people. I, I signed up, done. Check that one off. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Jamie, um, you know, as we are stepping into it as a technology provider within, uh, you know, the expense management space, what's your what's your recommendation for us? What should we be thinking about? What should we be doing? What, what's your recommendation for us? So a couple of things, and I think you're doing a lot of it already. The first thing is show up. You guys do. You guys are showing up, and you're at Channel Connect. You're at the Amped events. I know, as Jason and the team of being built out that you're, you're spreading out even more. So I, I think that's half the battle is showing up. And, you know, the days of the booze cruise are over. It's about education and enablement. We all can afford to go have a drink together. We're going to do that no matter what, right? But at the end of the day, showing up and being on that stage paired with like-minded technology companies that don't do what you do. Uh, we're going to put you on the stage with companies at our AMP events and at our shows that have nothing to do with your business but it makes sense to that customer to ask that next question. So I think that's the first thing. And then I think the next thing is continued investment truly in the enablement and education programs and make sure that you're well equipped to learn those partners. You know, they, they want to learn from you. And so I think investing there, it will be a very, very important thing. And then ultimately doing fun stuff like this. You guys are different. I knew that the second I met Scott and uh, I'm excited about where you guys are going. I'm excited about the company. Uh, I love being on this podcast, and I look forward to what the future holds for all of us. Is it what was the tagline? Different is good. Different is yeah. Different is good. I always, these guys always laugh. You can ask Weezer about this. I always say to him, uh, yeah. I always say I'm anything but common. I'm anything but common. I don't want to ever be common. It, it's so true, you know, and and. We, we talk about, we'll, we'll, we'll sort of uh, go on a, a tangent here a little bit, but we talk about our organization and, and we've rolled out sets of internal um, sort of values that we believe are important. And the, the one that I think hits on what you just said, JD, is what we call be real, be authentic, be yourself, have fun, joke, you know, you know we're, not, we're not in the day of uh, sitting in, uh, you know, suits and ties or on the other end of the spectrum as you said sitting on a on a booze cruise we're sitting there right in there in the middle we want to have fun we want to deliver we want to do business uh we want to deliver to our mutual customers and you know having fun along the way is uh is a great way to do it and i think when you talk about the culture fit between scan source and telesis and calero that that really that sort of embodies that culture fit well, I mean, they'll never see the footage of us before this call. And they're certainly not going to see the footage of us after this call. But, you know, it was am it's amazing what a little authenticity can do, isn't it? Like immediately, you feel it. You know the camaraderie. And, you know, I want to be part of that. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think our customers appreciate that. And I think that's – I think our customers, when we talk about the channel approach, we talk about why we wanted to invest in the channel more heavily than we have in the past – it is about that authenticity and getting those more authentic relationships developed with the customer and the channel partner so that everyone feels like, hey, we're all we're all in this together. We're all we're all we're all shooting for the same target. Yeah, it's helping our customers evolve. I mean, at the end of the day, this is helping our customers go through the digital transformation journey, get to the cloud, move to SaaS, all the things that they need to go do for us. That's what we enable from a technology perspective at a core. 
And, you know, we can take the agents with us, they can take us with them. And, and there's such a symbiotic relationship of so many different things that they'll have the options to go do so many different avenues in which now an agent will have visibility into different pieces of spend, different opportunities for them to go uh, capitalize on that they never would have had before. Yeah. Hey, so I'd like to uh, flip the script a little bit, you know, make my own rules as I, as I normally do. So I actually have a, you know, a question for Andrew. Um, so, I mean, Andrew, look, you, you have been, uh, you've been uh, in TEM for, for a number of years, uh, you know, driving historically from the TEM perspective, a bunch of direct sales. We had a lot of agent and channel success in call accounting, and now we're starting to see that shift back towards channels. So I guess from your sort of historic perspective on the TEM side, what do you think is helping drive that? The, the more traditional TEM services back towards a channel versus direct. It's, so I think there's I think there's two pieces of it. If you if you go back historically, um, I think TEM was really complicated and maybe overly complicated from uh, a software and a service perspective and everything that's happened, uh, you know, around that. And it was really hard for in a channel partner, whether they be an agent or uh, anybody else to actually conceptualize what it was and be able to communicate it because we couldn't help them enough. And so what we've done over the last, you know, eight or nine years in terms of evolving the technology, everything that we've brought to bear to help crystallize the value proposition of it, to crystallize how it gets communicated and the scale at which we have now today makes us so much more channel friendly as a product than we were four, five, six years ago. And the the side benefit of that is it's allowing us to go further down market than we ever have been able to go before because of all of the automation and technology we brought to bear, which again, plays so well into the channel because to JD's point earlier, um, we're not going to be able to invest and hire 500 salespeople if I can leverage the channel and leverage the agent community and leverage all of that to go out and attack all of these customers, it is so much scale for us and provides so much opportunity for the agents that's at a different point than where we're at before. And then we layer on top of that with you know our latest offering around SaaS, and that is such a channel friendly product as well. So to me, it all comes down to we now have a solution that is very friendly to the channel, and that's where we weren't before. Yeah, that's a great, uh, great, great answer. It also uh, certainly supports the investment we've made in technology, you know, efficiency around operational delivery from implementation all the way through to BAU to help to, to JD's point, make that education step so much easier, which is which is critical for those for those agents. Scott, I'm going to throw out there that I kind of like Andrew asking the questions and not answering them because he made me feel really, really insignificant right there. <laughs> well, uh, it, it was not rehearsed, so I will give Andrew credit on that. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was, yeah. a, it was a total, it was a total uh, out of left field, but um, no, it, it, it it's good. Look, I think um, you know from my perspective, uh, An Andrew knows. Uh, uh, JD, you know, and certainly the, the historic legacy that Intellisys knows that I, I'm a huge believer in channel. Um, and again, not because I don't like direct, but because I don't want to force my customer into doing a business with me in any particular way. Uh, and so I, that, I'm super excited about the, the channel program. Uh, Jason, who's, who's leading it for us. I know JD, uh, it, you, you like Jason as well, so I think we've got a match there. But, you know, from my perspective, this is all about the customer, making it easy for them to do business with us. So Yeah, I, I should have checked uh, Jason's references a little more in depth and <laughs> had a call with JD prior. To Andrew, that. you should have, you should have called him. It's one right. blip in the radar right there. <laughs> yeah, we Look, we feel the same way about Calera. We are very excited about this partnership. We think that it is somewhat of a greenfield market you know, the other way for us um, and uh, excited to go to market with you guys. You're good people. You got a great, great offering um, and a great product and, uh, and you're fun to hang out with. So it's going to be good. Yeah, absolutely. 
Well, guys, thank you guys so much for joining uh, me today. Really appreciate the, the conversation. Uh, JD, thank you uh, again for taking time out of your busy schedule. Um, this has been fantastic, and uh, we'll see you next time on Dare to Innovate. Stay on top of the conversation. Like and subscribe to our channel to get notified when our newest episodes release. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Dare to Innovate.